We have finally bought the most expensive Razor Blade 17 currently available. Now this unit didn't come cheap and I had to sacrifice one of Gary's kidneys to raise the funds for this machine. So today we're going to look around this laptop, we're going to check out its performance and we're going to fire up some games to find out if this premium 4K compact gaming laptop is worth the cost. Hi, this is David at MASH IT and this is the laptop we've wanted to review for a long, long time. The 2022 Razer Blade 17 with the i9 processor, 3080 Ti and bright 4K 120Hz panel. Now this costs an eye-watering £4,500 in the UK and this is why it's taken us so long to get it in. With being a small channel that buy all our own laptops for review, we do struggle to be able to afford all of these expensive machines in through the test bench. And you don't have to buy the most expensive option available at £4,500, there are plenty of other versions. It starts with a 3060 and obviously goes up to the 3080 Ti and it comes with also an i7 or the i9 that I've got in this machine here. There's also three different options on the screens from 1080p, 1440p to the 4K panel I'm using. And you can't deny that razor blades are absolutely beautiful machines. Now yes they do come with some razor tacks, it is very expensive but you are getting a very premium machine for your money. Now they make the razor blades in a 14 inch, 15 inch and a 17 inch and the thing I love about these machines is apart from the different size of the form factor they all look very similar and we have done a video comparing the 14, 15 and 17 inch on our MASH Extra channel. I will link that down below in case you want to watch that. But this here is the big daddy, the 17 inch. It is quite hefty for a razor blade because obviously these are compact gaming laptops but this is by far the best performing razor blade of the range that you can get. So we're going to quickly start by taking a look around the actual chassis itself just in case you haven't seen a razor blade or maybe you haven't seen this year's model. Now as usual we've got the anodized aluminium and it is a machined piece of aluminium which is why it's so sturdy and solid and premium looking. It basically looks like a black MacBook for Windows and that is something that I really do like because I love the build quality of Macs but obviously I like Windows. Now as always with this black finish it's a bit of a fingerprint magnet but Razer have improved the finish this year, so though it will absorb your fingerprints and you will constantly be cleaning the laptop, it's nowhere near as bad as the previous year's Razer blades where you literally touch them and they would just glow at you. And as usual, we've got the lit Razer logo. Again, you can either have this permanently on, pulsing, or pulse when it's in sleep, or you can turn it off if you wish. And if you don't like that, you want to buy this for like a business class environment, you can just buy a skin to go over the top to hide that logo altogether. And a reason that I particularly like razor blades and razor blades I think are so popular is because despite being a gaming laptop and this being a 17 inch model, they are still so incredibly compact. Now you will lose some performance to have it this compact and that's something we will discuss in the performance section. But basically you'll be forgiven for thinking that this is actually a workstation rather than an actual gaming laptop. And apart from the actual logo on the top, this would look at home in a business environment. The build quality is incredible. It's rock solid as it is obviously a milled piece of aluminium. And Razor have done an incredible job with the ports. The ports are on the left and the right side of the machine, making them very easy to use on a day-to-day -day basis. Something that I've always griped about with the Alienwares, because although the Alienwares are cleaner with all the ports at the back, it is incredibly difficult plugging things in and out of the machine. And if you are using your machine as a workstation and you're plugging things in and out regularly, having them on the side really helps. We also do get a good port selection, the power jack, the ethernet port, two USB-A ports, a Thunderbolt port and a headset jack. And if I spin it around to the right side with a Kensington lock, an HDMI 2.1 port, a USB-A, another Thunderbolt port and a full-size memory card reader. And that for me, being a content creator as well as a gamer, is really important and something that not many other gaming laptops actually have. I will buy this machine to use for gaming, video editing and Photoshop so to have that full size SD card reader is really handy. Now I realise not everybody is into Photoshop and video editing, but obviously this is a niche product, as I say, more of a workstation than just a gaming laptop. Now the back of the machine, we have absolutely nothing other than the hinge, which goes right across the machine. On the far right, we've got the status LED, which is green when the machine is on, when the screen is powered off, and white pulsing when the machine is in sleep. So that's quite handy, you know the state of the actual machine. And we've got a large cutout at the middle of the front to allow you to pop your finger in there for easy one-handed opening to open that beautiful 17 inch display. So looking at the deck, we've obviously got aluminium either side and now we've got CNC milled holes for the speaker grill. Last year they used mesh for the speaker grills, did look a little bit cheap, 
This year, we've got machined holes, which looks incredibly premium. And I know this is only a tiny little feature, but when you're spending this much money on a laptop, you want it to look amazing. And this really does. Little things like this really finish it off. And the thing with the razor blade, every year the design hardly ever changes. And that's not a bad thing. Razor spent years perfecting this form factor. And each year we're just getting little incremental improvements, such as these milled holes, the better touch, and the improved, obviously, internals, that keep adding to that razor blade experience. Now we have the same improved finish on the actual deck here as well, so it won't get as many fingerprints as before, but you will still be constantly cleaning it. We also get one of the best touch pads on an actual Windows machine. It's incredibly large, it's glass, it feels incredible, it's responsive, it works really well, the clicks are great. It's just an amazing all-round touchpad. And that's something that I really say about Windows touchpads. Moving up to the actual keyboard, and that's another small change they've made this year. The keycaps are ever so slightly larger and the typing experience is definitely better this year than previous razor blades. Don't get me wrong, it won't beat an Alienware for typing experience, but it is a good step up over the last year's keyboard. And we're treated to the usual per key RGB that's controlled via Razer Synapse, and we will look at Synapse later on, but it is fantastic. The effects, the brightness settings, and the different functionality you can use on this keyboard. Also, they've taken the power button, it used to be in the speaker grill, which was very odd from the previous Razer Blades, and they've now put it into the top right of the keyboard. Now, despite it being part of the keyboard, a quick accidental tap won't set it to sleep. You do need to actually hold it for a half a second or so to get it to actually function. And that's really handy. So if you are typing and you accidentally hit it instead of backspace or delete, the machine doesn't go to sleep. So well thought out there, Razer. And flanking either side of the keyboard, we have the new speaker system, which now includes eight speakers. Some of them are upward firing through these grills here and some are downward firing. The speakers sound like this. Speaker test of the Razer Blade 17-2022, and we're at 80% volume, starting now. So these are really impressive for Windows gaming laptop speakers, certainly one of the best I've heard on a Windows gaming laptop, but still we're missing a bit of bass, and it's certainly not as good as a MacBook Pro 16, but then no Windows laptops are. And moving up to the screen, we've obviously got the highest spec Razer Blade 17, and with the highest spec you get the 144Hz 4K 100% P3 color gamut panel. And I absolutely love this panel, this is the reason that we chose the highest spec model because not only is it an incredible 4K panel with great colors and great saturation, but this is by far the brightest screen that Razer offer on any of the Razer blades. Now, the 1080p and the QHD panels are only about 300 nits of brightness. I'm often in very bright environments and 300 nits isn't as much as I like in a laptop for my daily use. Whereas this panel gets so much brighter that I can use it in pretty much any bright environment, even outdoors as long as you're not in bright direct sunlight. And that for me is very important. And this is the only razor blade that actually has such a bright screen. And although this is a 4K panel, which will look great for your media consumption and actual media creation work, you can still game incredibly well on this panel. Now, not all games are gonna be able to play natively at 4K, but the panel scales really well. And it's also been 144 Hertz, a very responsive panel as well. So a great panel that you can actually game on as well as doing your work. And then up above the actual screen, we've got the 1080p webcam, which looks and sounds like this. So this is a test of the webcam and the microphones on the 2022 Razer Blade 17. And they've also included Windows Hello Facial Recognition, which is by far my favorite way of logging into Windows. This works absolutely flawlessly. I open the lid of this Razer Blade and I'm straight there on the desktop. Absolutely love Windows Hello. I think all laptops should have it. So before we move on to the sort of upgradability and performance, I just want to quickly talk about the Razorblade sign-up software and the Razorblade ecosystem. Because when you're buying into something like a Razorblade, this is an expensive purchase, but you're not necessarily just buying a Razorblade. The Razorblade sign is a piece of software you have to have on your laptop. Now don't get me wrong, it's not perfect. It can sometimes take a long while to load up and to actually install, which is a little bit annoying. But it is by far one of my favorite pieces of inbuilt software for any of the actual gaming laptops out there. And if you know how much I've moaned about, say, the Alienware Command Center as an example, this is night and day better than the Alienware software. 
And we also have the advantage of being able to have all the razor peripherals in that razor blade signups as well. So that all of your peripherals can sync up, all of your peripherals can be controlled, all via one piece of software, providing you want razor blade mice and keyboards. And that moves me on to the razor blade ecosystem, because the razor blade ecosystem is pretty massive. We're currently building a full razor desk setup at the moment with a razor raptor, the keyboard, the mouse, the headset. And I have to be honest, everything works incredibly well together. And that's one of the things I love about the Razor. And we will be doing a dedicated video on that soon, so make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. Uh, we're going to take you around our full Razor Blade setup. Right, so let's just crack this machine open and take a look at the upgradability. And despite being such a compact 17 inch gaming laptop, Razor have still done an incredible job allowing you to upgrade some of the key components. You've still got two replaceable DIMM slots for your DDR5 RAM. Now this model does come with 32 gigabytes. The cheaper models come with 16 gigabytes, but you can still easily throw in 64 gigabytes in this machine if you need it. We've got two M.2 PCIe4 SSDs for that super fast storage. It comes with one terabyte as standard. I will be ripping that out and upgrading it very, very soon and popping two, two terabytes in here. The Wi-Fi card is also upgradable and that's still something that's nice to have because a lot of them do come with soldered on Wi-Fi cards. And despite this being the most compact gaming laptop of the bunch, it's probably one of the most upgradable. So let's talk about the performance. And I knew going into this, having owned plenty of Razor Blades in the past, that the CP performance on this Razor Blade 17 was never gonna be as good as the other Alienware, Asus, or MSI gaming laptops we've tested previously. Razer always excessively caps the CPU power consumption. Now this does mean you won't see crazy internal temperatures like on the Alienware X17 R2, which regularly hits 100 degrees C but you also don't get the insane performance that you expect from these new 12th generation CPUs. Now the 12900H i9 CPU in this laptop in Cinebench R23 scored only just over 13,000 points, which is about on par with the previous 11th gen Intel laptop from last year, and a far cry from the Alienware X17 R2 i7 that we've reviewed previously. Putting it into balance mode, when running Cinebench R23, we got a laughable score of 8,700 points. But this did give us the unexpected pleasure of incredibly quiet fans on the full load multi-core benchmarks. And I often prefer this over the fans ramping up massively when you're in the full boost mode. Now let's be honest, if you're working in an office, you don't really want these machines screaming when you've got people around you. So the fact you can put it into balance, still get pretty good performance and have a quiet machine is really quite impressive. Single core performance is decent on this blade due to the fact that the multipliers need less wattage on just one core, giving us decent Geekbench 5 CPU scores. And moving over to the GPU benchmark, Razer has done us proud this year by increasing the GPU TGP to 175 watts on this 3080 Ti in this laptop. This allows for some decent GPU scores in the 3 d Mark benchmarks, as well as decent gaming benchmarks throughout our test suite. Moving on to gameplay itself, and this machine was an absolute joy to behold. The laptop stayed comfortably cool during long-term game sessions. The keyboard and the palm rest were comfortable to keep my hands on, which is unusual for a razor blade. Gaming on balance mode was pleasant, with the fans only hitting 45 decibels. And when we cranked it up to the performance mode and boosted that CPU, we still hit only 52 decibels. And because the fans stayed static, they didn't pulsate, it was still pleasant. Also, the bright 4K display was crisp and responsive, with great fluid gameplay. And if your game can't play well at 4K, you can knock it down to 1440p or 1080p, and this panel scales so well, it still looked great. Moving on to battery life, and as usual with these Intel 12th generation CPUs, the battery life was disappointing. We got just under four hours, you will be our usual streaming YouTube over Wi-Fi at 200 nits test. But the one saving grace was with all these 12th generation laptops, the performance on battery is incredibly snappy. Now, obviously, if you're gonna be pushing this laptop hard on battery, you're gonna be getting a lot less than that four hours. And with the top end model this year, you need a 280 watt power supply. And Razer have redesigned the power supply to give us a GAN charger that's no bigger than the previous 230 watt power supply. But this is sad news if you've got some of the old 230 watt power supplies. I know I've always got one knocking around in my office and one in the bag so I can just plug in anywhere. You do need that 280 watts to get the maximum performance out of this laptop. But if you do use a 230 watt power adapter, you're basically limited to the balance mode. So it still works fine, but you just can't hit the custom boost mode. And also, the actual laptop can be powered via the Thunderbolt ports, but it's capped at 100 watts. So it's fine to charge the laptop and to do some office work, but you're not gonna be doing some full powered gaming on this laptop with the USB-C. So then we have to discuss the elephant in the room, and that is the price. 
At £4,500 in the UK, this is the most expensive laptop we've ever bought on the channel. And it even makes our previous Anywhere X17R2 seem cheap. And if you're buying this top-end razor blade because you think you can get the best performance out there for the money, you can be sorely disappointed because the CPU is heavily capped. You could buy any of this year's razor blade 17s and get very similar CPU performance. So you're paying massively for the i9 in this model and not getting the benefits. But that's not what Razer's really focused upon here. You're basically spending an awful lot of money to get an incredibly premium creativity and gaming laptop. Now the performance on this compact 17 inch gaming laptop would destroy something like a Lenovo X1 Extreme or an XPS 17. And although it doesn't have quite the performance to match the Alienware's, the Asus or the MSI gaming laptops, it's a lot more compact. The build quality is fantastic. It looks great. And apart from the logo on the top of the lid, it wouldn't look out of place in an office. Combine that with the bright 4K panel that's brighter than any of the other Razer Blade 17s out there, which is much more usable if you're in a light environment. The great port selection on either side, which makes this laptop incredibly useful. And the great customizability and the ecosystem of the Razer Synapse and all the associated peripheral makes this a great all-round package. And personally, for somebody that uses laptops for video editing, Photoshop and gaming, Something like this is absolutely ideal for me, although I still don't think I could justify paying £4,500 for one. Now, obviously, we're at the end of our 12th generation laptop reviews. This will probably be our last 12th generation laptop that we review. And we will be moving on to the 13th gen and the new 4000 series NVIDIA GPUs. We'll probably see the prices drop on these 2022 razor blades, and then could be a great time to pick up a discounted i9 razor blade with this 4K display. And I think at two to 3000 I'll be much happier buying something like this than I would a MacBook, an XPS, or any other creativity laptop, and I can actually game on this device, and it's a great all-round experience. Now that's my thought on this Razer Blade 17. As always, I'd love to know what you guys think. Could you justify the incredible price tag on this laptop, or do you think you'd much rather go for a different brand? Please let me know, as always, in the comment section down below, and I will get back to you. And lastly, thank you for watching.